Back on air. Been a, been a couple minutes, weeks, few weeks. Yeah, a few weeks. Had to take a little break because of school Jewel. discrepancies. Yeah. And I was traveling. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Where'd you? Where'd you end up going again? So for one week I was in Austin because of work, and then the next week I was in India because we had family stuff to take care of. But what up? Yeah, it was chill. Oh yeah. Except the fact that I got fucking sick on the second week because I was only supposed to be there for one week. <laughs> oh wow, really? Yeah, I got. Was that in India? Yeah, oh. I got like a one hundred two fever the day I was supposed to fly out, and I was like, I'm good, bro. Oh, shit. Um, what part of India? South India. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know, I don't really... I mean, I'm darker. It's, it's hard, I don't know, like... I mean, not to be like racist, that, but, but if they're darker skin, they're South Indian. Okay, okay. I don't know. I was it just, that. yeah. I, actually, I've been, like, just getting into, like, studying up that, like... Area of the world. That area is, like, culture and religious, like, beliefs. Like, I really I, yeah. get... I've really gotten myself fascinated with, like, Hinduism and Buddhism and Taoism and Taoism, just because, like, we are not... We don't, we don't learn about it a lot. We don't learn about it But at all, since we do so. learn a little bit about Greek mythology, it's kind of similar to Hindu like mythology. Yeah, yeah, so I understand like the pantheons and the mythologies. I, I've always been a mythology nut, but like understanding like the direction on where it went after that. Yeah. Because you know? like same thing with Greek mythology. Like so that's like, it's like the linchpin of Western, I wouldn't say religion, but yeah. culture. Right? And that's where, we, that's where it comes from. Like that's where like religion, I wouldn't say religion, but that's again. So culture started to like really hit its stride, you know, Mesopotamia area. And they had their own mythologies that were considered religions, but at the same yeah. time. Like, I always, yeah, I always find that confusing because I'm like, is Hinduism a religion or a mythology? Or is it both? Like, um, yeah, see, that's the, that's the weird part is like they've, they've like, like I feel like I'm insulting people if I say it's just a mythology, but I'm like, it kind of, I don't know. Well, I wonder if like people on the, like people in the East would say that it's the same thing about like the Bible. Yeah, but like, it's is that not a mythology? Like, or is, I mean, because like, and that's not trying to become any offensive, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. But like, to people who don't believe in that, like, would they consider that a mythology? Or, I just you know, think it's just, because it's a religion, right? since we look at like Greek mythology and no one really, as far as I'm aware, no one really considers that a religion. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, if there's a lot of similarities for like Hinduism, is that like in the same... Group? How would you even constitute that religion? Uh, as a religion either, like... What are you, Greek mythologists? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you like, can't even say. I don't even know how you would like. I don't even know if they considered it a religion back then or just like a just way of life. Or or like, yeah. Yeah. But it's always yeah. interesting how people like come up with those like concepts, man. Like, like how did you come up with the guy who throws lightning from like. And again, this is just very paraphrased, right? Because I don't think it's set like this. But like. I don't, I, a god who strikes lightning down, and you'll get millions of different depictions of the dude with a white beard, with a toga uh, on, or yeah. like, you know, like all sorts of different It's like depictions. that, isn't there that like one iconic picture where he's like going like this or whatever? Like, oh, that's, that's, is that, that's not Zeus, I that's, think that's uh, God. That's like a, that's Christian. Like, oh, that's, is it? That's, a that's not a Greek torture, thing? I think. Hmm. Oh, so that was Because I think it's thing. like, the, the, like, Humans are made in the likeness of God, kind of thing. Oh, uh, okay, okay. For some reason I always thought that was a great uh, thing. But yeah, it's just weird because, like, then you'll get, like, it becomes supernatural to the point where they're talking about, you know, like, Zeus, you know, transforming into an eagle or transforming into a different animal and, you know, and so, and yeah. so women or, you know, conceiving these or having children with, with human women and turning demigods into like you just hear all these crazy stories you know it's yeah just... i think we l read a little bit of greek mythology in high school but then like the percy jackson series came on and that was when i started like paying more attention to it but well, we also had the odyssey right yeah yeah we read the odyssey we, we read one was, other thing book. what's the one with the the dude who marries his mom oh oedipus yeah that's also greek mythology right i think it's greek it's tragic but yeah it's great yeah i yeah. think you're right i think it is but we had yeah, the odyssey and, pr and prior to that was the iliad which was the trojan yeah. war so like right that. you know you kind of got to dip, dip your toes into the water a little bit yeah but so, like yeah i think i mean then like i don't know about you i took the olympics class in high school we had a class on like the history of olympics and yeah same and like obviously that's gonna dive into like I started Greek, in yeah. Greece. It's from Olympic, it's Olympic, comes from the word Olympia, Olympus. 
But we'll switch topics a little bit. Um, speaking of Zeus being the father of the gods, or Odin being the father of the gods, too. Uh, Father's Day is coming up, so, you know, like, do you have any plans for Father's Day? Um, I think we just have a few people coming over for, like, not a Father's Day thing, but just, like, on that, it just happened to be on that day. Yeah. But, yeah. My family normally just grabs dinner. And that's yeah, about that's it. pretty much what we do. Like, I feel like holidays and, like, I feel like dates have been so watered down now. Like, we've gone past that point of, like, Christmas spirit and Christmas off. Yeah. I think it happens in waves, right? Like... Some years it's super hype. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's around it's around the young ones, right? So, yeah. like, for now, now, like, that we're all turning into, like, young adults and adults. You know, our parents don't really give a shit about Christmas spirit as much. Yeah. Like, unless, you know, we have kids or nephews right so like we i have two nephews or like their grandparents grandsons or yeah i have three nephews and a niece now you know so whenever they come down for christmas or like the holidays like everyone's gonna fucking put on like that christmas spirit so like they get that feeling of what christmas was yeah so like their day isn't like ruined yeah yeah because you want to make those days special for them for whatever reason like I definitely remember growing up, like, in kindergarten or, like, first grade. Like, Mother's Day and Father's Day, we used to, like, be making shit. Yeah, they <laughs> like, for the week. Yeah. Shit. I remember doing the hand thing. I don't even, The like, turkey? No, hand no, no. Or... There's, like, the clay one. Where oh, you, I yeah, don't know that's that... very young, dude. That's, like, what? Preschool? That was either kindergarten or, or yeah, preschool. Yeah, I remember that. A little and... hand picture. Or, like, some people do their feet. You can do your feet. I didn't know you could do your feet. I mean, you can't. Technically, you could do your feet. I didn't know that, like, schools would let yeah. you do your feet. So it was, it was weird, man. Like, I mean, it was cool, but weird, but. Or you'd make a little card. Yeah, do like some artworks. I think stuff. fourth grade was like when they were just like, just make something. Like. Right, yeah. like second grade, it was like, or okay, I, we're yeah. all going to do this. Third grade, it was like, okay, let's fit it into this parameter. Fourth grade was like. You figure it out. And yeah. then you start getting older and they start making like an assignment, like write something about your dad, like a serious yeah. ass yeah. essay. Yeah, bro. Yeah. But. It's so weird, man. We're, we are a generation, we are the last generation of the 1900s. Shit trips me out. <laughs> and so if we think about it, my dad was born in the 60s. Same. And then his dad must have been born in like the 40s. 40s. Or maybe even like the 30s. 30s, right? right? And then probably the 40s, right? Cause 20, like, 30 years? Give or take. Yeah, maybe late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. Right? And then that person's dad was probably born in like the 20s. And that was like World War One. Yeah. Or like not the 20s, sorry, like early 20s. Like, yeah, I figured someone was always like, we're like. Early 1900s, we'll say that much. And that was before World War One, dude. So like. We're only a few One, generations two, removed from World War Two and a few more 60s. from World War One. So my dad's sixties, forties, fifties. Yeah, we're like three generations away from like a century. That's fucking crazy, dude. Well, we're the four, but yeah, yeah. four generations within, which makes sense. Twenty-five years span. Yeah. Of like, on average, quiet, dude. Uh, four, like three generations ago, people didn't even have fucking cars. Cars were not a yeah. thing. Roads were. I mean, shit. Two generations ago, people didn't have phones. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, a generation ago, fucking people didn't have fucking the internet. Yeah, like and no phones, social media. Not even two. One generation ago, right? Our parents didn't start off with phones, did they? Sixties. Nah. I mean, they had like yeah, the yeah. the Maybe hand, the phones, land, yeah. yeah, the the big ass phone where you gotta like dial the fuck yeah, in. Yeah. But well, I think, yeah. That, man, it was and even their TVs were kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. Cars were just like becoming a thing. That's where all the classic, that's where the classics came from, right? The all the classic years. muscles, yeah. Yeah. Just all classic cars came from like that, right? I mean, it's a mix of classics, but. Fuck, dude. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about. Like, but then you think about it this way, too. It's like your lineage, right? Because, like, my mom is the first. She was the first, she's the first generation. No, I'm the first generation on my mom's side. She was born in, in the Philippines. Oh, okay. And at a very young age, they moved, but still, like, technically, I'm first generation here. So, here, like, gotcha, gotcha. so, like, her dad, right, was born in 39. Does that make sense? That, yeah, I think that. Yeah, that. 39 or 40s, right? So, that was World War II right there. 
in the Philippines. That one would have been crazy. In the Philippines. Yeah. Right? And so his dad, right, was probably going to be in like the 19, again, 1910s, give or take, whatever. But still, like, what was the Philippines like back in 1910? What was Italy like back in like the early 1900s? I mean, we could obviously look into the yearbook. Yeah. Or into the yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> into the history books. But, like, it's just so wild to think about shit like that, isn't it? Like, where we got to today, like, a hundred years of, like, a hundred years difference, and then you look at, at your own, like, little timeline of shit, yeah. and it's like, damn. Like, or just, like, I don't know if you've ever taken the time to ask about, like, stories. Sometimes I will, just because I'm always curious, and I'm just like, how the fuck did you oh, even, like, because we have, like, I'm not gonna, we don't have, like, a huge family, but we have a decent size, like, extended family and stuff. I'm like, how the fuck did y'all keep in contact? Because there was no fucking phones. Like, yeah. And it's like, it, transportation was way harder back then. Yeah. I think it was just like, what, trains? <laughs> like, yeah, I was going to say, there's always that, like, mimic story of, like, you know, I had to walk 15 miles uh, to get to school yeah, in the yeah. snow, wearing uh, books in my hand. Like, my mom used to tell that kind of story. And I was like, I feel like sometimes you're just exaggerating. But then when you think it. about it, it could kind of be I true. Really, like, there's some truth to it, too, for sure. Yeah. We had it. Or like, people say yeah. we have it easy. We do kind of have it easy, man. And like the generations keep having it easy, but like, that's, that's the whole point, right? Like, we're trying to build society to make it easier, easier, and easier to the point where like things are autonomous at yeah. a certain degree. Who happens when we get to that point of autonomy? It's gonna be wild. I think there is like a book about that too. Is it uh, a million books about autonomy? Yeah. Like that autonomousness. But like even politicians or certain people who've been running for like for political positions have been like trying to get get their like foot in the door in that idea like what happens when jobs like when like humans become obsolete for jobs like, yeah they'll have to set like this like it's gonna move to like the standard of like you know you get a wage for doing nothing and that's just how it goes like right like how, how else do we make a living if yeah. everything becomes like the economic if, basic income or yeah. whatever they call it and that's like or uh, universal basic income that becomes yeah. The AI. yeah yeah exactly that's what it was but it's like, it becomes a thing of like, how can we, like if, if AI makes human workforce obsolete, and obviously there's going to be job forces that are not going to be like obsolete in that terms, like we'll have a field, but not everyone's going to be able to fulfill that field. You know what I mean? Not yeah. everyone's going to want, like the supply and demand of like work, labor force is going to be plummeting because of, because of like technology and ai fucking coming in to take this take the cuffs yeah so then what i feel like people at least will get a chance to be a little more creative or artistic because i can never see ai being able to i mean i'm sure there's like algorithms or patterns to follow for like drawings and paintings but that's what i would want to do was like create like art through like code I guess like yeah, some yeah, people you, do that, but yeah. I guess so you could consider like oh NFT kind of thing, but I yeah. mean like literally like just create an algorithm that'll like create like an animatronic like little design. Thing. Yeah, I wonder if you could make a like a code or like an AI that can see someone's like painting pattern and replicate it. Yeah, like a Van Gogh, like you could just see all of his work and then like do something new, but in that same. Wait. It would be cool if like you just describe a drawing and like it'll draw what you're just describing. Right. And then if you don't like it, you can like So like it's like drawing with words, you know what I mean? <laughs> like draw me a horse. And then as more at the more details you give, the better the, the drawing drawing, gets, drawing it yeah. gets. That'd be cool. Yeah. It's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's my idea. Copyrighted uh, patent pending. <laughs> Alright, this episode can't go on air now. <laughs> I don't really care. So make that, that'd be sick. I'm not one to be like, no, I gotta keep this myself. Like, if someone gets yeah. that idea out there, that'd be fucking lit. I always feel like there's a lot of people that probably have similar ideas. It's just the execution that makes the difference. Oh, 100%. Like, I always 100%. just think of like the DoorDash thing. Like, back in the day, we had Pizza Hut delivering. So I'm sure there was a bunch of people who were like, what if we could have more than just pizza delivered to our house? Yeah, like, exactly. for the Netflix, right? Netflix yeah. fucking just kicked. Blockbuster's teeth in. Yeah. They're like, okay, instead of you having to rent a movie all the time and wasting your gas going to this movie store. Like, and like, it not, might not be available because all the fucking CDs are gone or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Here, like, just take it on the internet. There yeah. you go. That way we'll never run out. <laughs> you know what the, the like, little linchpin of that was? Is like the broadband, like, data. Like, right? Like, how much data uh, do you eat up now? And back then, too, like, we didn't have fast internet, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 
But like, how much data does that use? Like, where do we use? Like, where does all this usage of data come from? I feel like that's a lot of reason why we have like uh, such high carbon footprints because of all the data, like centers and towers or like whatever. Oh hell yeah! That dude. shit's like we have so much data is probably could, takes up so much energy it's to really like huge compute it. Server rooms, yeah, yeah. Really server rooms, and they have to be so cold too. So you're not even just like burning through like electricity, yeah. but it's like the, the fucking heat, yeah, yeah it's being emitted, it's hot spots in the fucking. Literally, like, literally, like, yeah, I've been to a few server rooms. That shit is fucking crazy. It's loud. It's hot. It, it can be hot, it, yeah. but it's loud, and it, it can be loud. Yeah, because the okay, fans are running the AC. Yeah. yeah, yeah, can be loud. It can be hot. It can be fucking just a lot, dude. Yeah. And the servers sometimes could be tiny, or they could be like fat, like. Yeah, and like I said, it could take up a whole fucking room. Yeah. A lot of the time, like a lot of tech companies, like they have literally like. Goddamn, like storage, like a garage, big and like big, as big as a, a, a large garage, yeah. full of fucking servers, or like a warehouse, like there you go, that's a warehouse, <laughs> like a <laughs> garage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this shit's crazy. Too much data everywhere. It, it it begs the question, right? Because like, there's that idea where like, if I just started a chain and I just like just a all right a a. A, A, A. And I just kept doing a combination of things or like A, mm -hmm. A, or B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I'll go through the whole alphabet. Then I'll go A, 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 B, A, C, A, D. Like, what would be created out of that? How many combinations of like things would, would come out of that? Mm -hmm. How long can we take that? Like, I don't know. Where, where would that end? Where would that leave us at? You know what I mean? Like, that's just one of my stupid thoughts, I guess. Yeah, just like endless possibilities, kind of. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, if we run all the possibilities that way, eventually you'll you'll be right in like what what it says. Yeah. One day you'll you'll get to the combination. It's almost like it'll be obviously like a ten to the twenty six, twenty six to the like x power, right? But like eventually you can start spelling out things that would be true. Mm -hmm. And that, that would determine future truths of like, oh, well, you can run to the combination of on uh, on this day, you know, the yeah. deal will do X, Y, and Z, right? Whatever X, Y, and Z is, you will actually do it. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Has that been said? Like, has the future been, like, predicted already in a, in, in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Through sheer just the... Just Data computer numbers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like... I think most phones now, unless you turn the feature off, like it'll tell you how many hours you've been on your phone or like on what apps or like wh how long you've slept on like your watch or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it could probably in the future just predict like, okay, on Tuesdays for the last five years, you've been sleeping this amount of hours or some shit, like something you wouldn't even notice. Yeah. Just like, but there's like sometimes your friends point out like tendencies that you don't even notice. So I'm sure if we just like put data to it, there's probably a bunch of tendencies. Oh, yeah. Well, with Moore's Law, too, with, like, I mean, you, if everyone knows what Moore's Law is, it is data is, is it data or storage capacity? I think it's storage capacity. Like, as storage capacity for data gets twice as large every, like, two years, and, and the actual size of that unit of storage gets twice as little. So, like, or micro, is it processors? I think it's processors, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the Moore's Law. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, about Moore's Law, right? Um, A little bit. I'm not like super familiar with it. Transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles. So with more circuits though, more electrical pathways, right? So that would be more data points. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, because I feel like I don't, I, either my brain is just not fully there on this topic of Moore's Law, but there's yeah. something that was there that I, that I you know I've brushed up on before. But I think that makes sense, because like, we keep uh, finding ways to make files and stuff smaller, but we keep finding ways to make like the places to store them bigger. Well, yeah, well, yeah. if you think about it, like, practically, right, like how much was like a two, two gigabyte USB, like back in like, Elements. Yeah, you could save like barely a few things. Yeah, I bet it was expensive. It was like twenty yeah. bucks. Now, like, now I found like a one terabyte flash drive for twenty bucks. Yeah, forty dollars. You know what I mean? Like now we have one terabyte. 
fucking flash drives, not like and they like not hard drives. And if you drives. think about it, like a few years ago, they used to be like big. Like they probably used to be like this size, and now they're probably like fucking like this size. Yeah, <laughs> they're exactly. like tiny. Then the, it's becoming a thing where it's like now the five now you have like five terabytes petabytes where those things are kind of big. But like I guarantee you, in like a few more years, like petabytes gonna be fucking like a little yeah. goddamn. Like USB. people who build their PCs could have ten terabytes in their fucking PC. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, now I'm very like. Still looking up the Moore's law. Oh, it's speed and capa- capability. But still, like with more speed and more capability, you know, that just helps. I mean, I guess it helps my my prior, prior argument of like, oh, if we wanted to just like, not again, predict the future, but write out the future through series of just like. Well, yeah, I mean, like even those. like history, we always say history repeats itself. So I'm sure you could build algorithms or somewhere that where it like tracks all the different events that happen in the world and maybe predict some shit that would happen. Well, that's always been my thing is like where, like what's the pattern? Yeah. Right. If if it's true that history repeats itself, where does the pattern start and what is like? Or like what are the factors pattern? or like what are the things that triggering points mm-hmm. and like. It's like it's like a it kind of dives into chaos theory a little bit, right? Because chaos theory, if you understand the point. The starting point of chaos, like of something in a chaotic state, you can determine every pathway of that chaotic state for it. So, so like the example of that would be like the double pendulum experiment. So if you have a pendulum and another pendulum tied to it and start it off at starting point, you could technically predict every point of that swing. But if you if you can't if you can't predict its starting point, or if you don't have its starting point to begin with. And obviously, it's going to be chaotic to the point where you may not know. Right? Yeah. Because you don't know it's initial. So you need to know that initial before you can know every other point between. I believe that's how it goes. That's like part of the theory of chaos theory. But I mean, alone on... Uh, and now I kind of lost my train of thought. In chaos theory. Uh-oh. Oh. I like <laughs> chaos theory, though. It's a, great, it's a great idea in terms of like understanding chaotic events. Oh, Yes. Sorry. But like, so repeating patterns, right? In history. Mm -hmm. So like, if we can determine where those repetitions start, like it doesn't have to be all of them, but if we can find certain patterns that line up, then we can kind of determine like where history repeats itself. Instead of just saying it repeats itself and having that being a big premise, we can figure out where it does. Do you think there's ever like events that have no precedence from previous history that happened? Any like, that have no precedence? Like, what do you mean? Like, is there anything that just happens once and, like, never repeats? I don't know. Or, like, I something that like, happens that isn't predictable in that? I feel like based on what we've seen and what's been going on and how much we currently know, Right, and how much has been observed? Because a lot of the things that of the past, we can't. E- I can't even confirm. Yeah. Right. Someone could tell me. Yeah, yeah. A first-person right perspective could tell me, but is what they saw what they really saw, and or is it how it happened? What yeah. They really experienced. Right. Like. I would say it can be. It, it's one of those superpositioned states of an answer. Right. Like it can be, and at the same time, it cannot. Right? Yeah. There can be like every event could be super unique to itself in a sense and at the same time maybe they're not and there's like a pattern for every event going on yeah i I just asked that question because like sometimes we see things happen and then they'll come like videos will come out of like someone having already said like oh this is gonna happen or something oh yeah or like um like simpsons predicted like like, donald trump being the president or like like, a bunch of shit even like during like 9 11 times there were like people that like warned or whatever that shit was going to happen or like even with this pandemic there's like the video of bill gates talking about it but i'm just wondering is there an event that has ever happened that no one's ever said anything like no one has ever called i feel like there's probably some but at the same time like there's so many events going on that are so like so hard to track everything yeah like it, I think it's the magnitude, right, of the event that, that really determines, like, well, like, it was, a, or here's one event that we, that people called wrong, and, you know, now they found, like, reason for why, but, like, the mind calendar predicting 2012 was going to be the end of the, world, end of the world, right? Yeah. And that was a prediction that some people made and some people stuck to, and, like, it became, like, this conspiracy, and 
and it didn't go through. Or even Y2K, right? People thought Y2K, if you remember Y2K, just like everyone thought that like the world was going to go into shit because of data point, like data storage for when it turned into the 2000s, right? Yeah, because yeah. I think they were afraid that like they used two point datas. So like instead of saying 1999, they'd say 99. And by the time it hits 2000, it'd roll over to zero, and like they didn't know what was going to happen, and they ex- they expected the worst. So mm-hmm. it was like a race against like reformatting all, every like data point that had a 99 on it or anything like that, and you know recycling it to a four point data perspective of 2000s, right? So now you have 1999, 1991, yeah. and 1987, and then to that point on, when it goes to 2000, it wouldn't be zero, zero, it'd be 2000. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of crazy that they didn't even think about that. Consider it, yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah. Really. Well, I mean, like, yeah, did people. Con- it's one of those things, like, did people predict Y2K or was it just one of those yeah. things? Or was people it. People kind yeah. of speculated it. Or were there, like, people who, like, were in charge of building, like, the data infrastructure that said anything, like, hey, maybe we should, like, do this? Yeah. <laughs> or, like, um. There's, like, here's, here's an example to, like, that. Predict your thing, but like the two thousand eight uh, crash, right? Oh, uh, the rece- or yeah. economic crash, like, like they made a movie about it, right? The Big Short, where yeah. they they predicted the crash was going to happen. And I'm sure they, even during the Great Depression, at least in the US, there were people that probably oh, were like, "This is going to happen." Oh, 100 yeah. percent. If you're that close to the money, too, I guarantee yeah. you. You've seen there. it coming from a mile away. 100%. Yeah. That's how it goes, like, and that's the thing, though. Like everybody can make a prediction, and you would probably. You got a 50-50 shot, yeah, I guess, technically. Yeah, because everything's in a superposition state. So you're proven wrong. You're yeah, it's either like true, wrong. you're right, or false. Like, yeah, yeah she exactly. didn't have it. Like, now, the odds of you being right are probably going to be slim based on your prediction. But at the same yeah. time, you still have those crazy odds. Like, yeah. I could say, like, oh, and in three days, like, uh, aliens will come to my house and abduct me, right? Yeah. And, like, until that day comes, like, I could be neither right or wrong. Yeah. Until that day comes or that day passes and that doesn't happen, like, we are in a state of super, like it's a superposition state. Now the likelihood of it happening is very fucking unlikely. Yeah. Right, but at the same time, anything can happen. This yeah. Is how it goes, you know. Like everything is possible, and there's also not everything is possible at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very interesting. I feel like as we move forward in technology, things are gonna continue to change. We're gonna look back and be like, wow. It was only two generations ago when we actually saw people in person. Yeah. Well, now, dude, well, now we've gotten to this point of, like, globalized, like, communication. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can, you can talk, like, to talk to people that you haven't world, seen dude. in months. My yeah. girlfriend's all the way in, uh, in Europe right now. Oh, fuck. And I can communicate. I mean, it's frustrating. Yeah, I can time communicate with her. Yeah. But it's, it's different. I mean... Something time difference plus like your whatever phone service you might not want to text or call because yeah, charges it can, whatever, it can yeah, cost, yeah. but if you use internet like yeah oh, you gotta find and like it's weird because we we're talking about like the philippines and like india and stuff earlier we're so used to having free wi-fi or like wi-fi available everywhere there's still parts of the world like literally outside your house you cannot get wi-fi yeah so it's oh like, yeah well even then too like a lot of servers are connected to each other for the most part unless you have like a huge unless you have like just such a huge system going on like facebook or like where it just connects to one kind of cloud yeah. right like it's hard to i would say it's hard because like like i said i'll i'll, I'll facetime her because like well it'll just be internet yeah consumption but at the same time it's just the difference in internet like consumption is just so like i want to pull my hair out sometimes because like it's just shit <laughs> yeah it's just so bad as much as like I have five bars and she can have five bars for whatever reason, like it's just not gonna work. Same thing when I was in Mexico, like I was in Mexico and or in Cancun and she was in Turkey. Fuck. I know, and like, like I don't know if it was because I, I don't think either one of us had like bad internet, but I think it was like I don't know if it was the distance or if it was just like something with the connections. Yeah. It was just hair pulling, man. I just just hair pulling. I just wanted to. <laughs> it is a frustrating thing because it causes a lot of issue. But yeah. Anyways, we kind of got really sidetracked on our topics. Yeah, supposed to be talking about Father's Day. I was just gonna say it was like, what, I think what kind of sparked that was like you said something about like 
I mean, oh, we were talking about the difference between like how far generations, the generations. Yeah, we got yeah. really excited. But before that, you were talking about how you like, because I'm the same way. Like when I was with my grandpa, right? Or like when he was, he passed away in high school. But like I never knew like about his past. Yeah. You know, so I wanted, I, I, I figured, I like started to understand it now. Just based on a, like coincidental like conversations I have with people around me. To talk to you about yeah. what he was like. Or yeah, like, and so then I would ask, like, try and ask any right people. It's just, it, it's hard sometimes, though, with that side, because, like, there's, like, oh, you're a dialect your, barrier. Oh, you're talking about your mom's side? My mom's yeah. side, yeah. There's a dialect barrier, so, like, or a, and a language barrier for a lot of yeah. parts. So, like, whatever they were saying, it's hard for me to understand. And I'm sure there's still, like, cultural barriers where it's, like, they talk about some things, you're like, I don't know what that is, or, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's why I kind of brought up the idea of, like, you know, like, my grandpa grew up in the Philippines, you know, like... During a time culture, with no technology or, lifestyle. like, yeah. So, like, what they were telling me how it was ran there was, like... My mind couldn't, like, it, it could can't. fathom it, but it was, like, hard to really put it into perspective because I don't know that culture like yeah. that, you know? It's weird because, like, uh, in the past, I've asked my dad about my grandpa, and, like, uh, sometimes he'd be like, yeah, I never thought about, like, a lot of these questions, so I never really asked him and sometimes i'd ask my grandpa but he's kind of like the type of person if i asked him about like what his struggles were growing up he'd be like don't focus on my struggles just focus on your life right now yeah that was my dad too i think that's my dad was like my grandma they yeah. were like yeah just know that it was rough and we had a hard time and well I, you know she passed away too so like when yeah. i got around it there, you'd hear little nicks and crannies of stories but like you're just like i don't know for me every time i hear a story about like my dad's past my mom's past or like of an elder family member's past, I'm just like jaw dropping. So, like, so I feel like people have like crazy stories, but they just don't feel like their life is as important or like as it's, it's not as the story is not, not as cool as or think. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the time. Like, but I feel like even if it's not interesting, at least to like your direct family, it's always interesting just to see like where you guys have come from or how the torch has been passed or whatever. Well, that was my uncle. He was just such a great storyteller and like yeah. Like he lived, he lived a very full life. In a very, in, he died at a very at a young age. But he lived a very full life for for what he did, but he didn't talk about much. He just knew a lot, and then at the same time, like the stories he did tell were like very detailed. You know, it was just like tell me like all of his army, like like as much army incidents without even explaining, like going into going into like uh on tours you know what i mean yeah. like, it was like oh yeah this one time a oh like a boa or a, i think it was a boa or a rattlesnake i think it, was, it had to be like a poison snake yeah like like it just like was on top of the barrel of his gun when he was prone on the ground you know what i mean like those are stories like that like what was he doing i think it was like training or something like yeah that. i don't remember those details but i remember the so like the, the image of the snake and the, yeah, I remember like what he was trying to portray in his in his stories. Like he wasn't trying to portray like going to war. It was just while he was in the service in the army, like yeah. this was an incident that occurred that fucking freaked him the fuck out. You know what I mean? Or, like, I wonder if it's sometimes like with dads or like grandpas and uncles or just like guys in general, we just kind of tend to think stuff is not as big of a deal as they might be. <laughs> we just do, brush it off a lot. <laughs> you do unless you understand. The school magnitude of like what you're saying so like yeah. again another story my uncle told me was like yeah when i was younger i took a, a tennis ball and i just like and jammed it in some dude's mouth <laughs> and then you can like visualize that you can take literally a tennis ball and go holy fuck yeah. you know what i mean like so like stories like that it's easier but like i think it's harder to tell stories when like you're like the solo person yeah you know what i mean like i did my whole ninja warrior thing but, like, telling that story is not as exciting because no one was there to, like, back the story up or, like, I could Add say, details that you might have forgotten. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, like, I, or I could be as detailed as I can and no one could take, no one, there's no one I can, like, refer to to be like, oh, yeah, I did see that go down. Or, yeah, that was how it went, it went out. Right? You know what I mean? Like, you would just have to take my word for it. So, I don't even, like, try to tell that story. I mean, there's many reasons why I try to hold that story back. But at the same time. I mean, I remember the first time I heard it, I thought it was crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, I know. It's fucking wild. That was stupid. <laughs> I, I was dumb, but I mean, I don't regret it. One I don't know if it's dumb. It just kind of like shows your determination. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there were better ways to do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Well, yeah, my dad would tell me stories. Well, my dad is very, like, it's really funny. I've been trying to get to, be, to that point of, like, my uncle kind of storytelling because he just fucking... Was he good. would take a story, and like I said, he was just a knowledgeable guy. So, like, he would tell me about, like, a lot of, like, mythology stories. Like, told me, and I couldn't tell if they were true or not, but the way he told it, the, I was like, I don't give a shit if this thing is true or not. Like, I like this story. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it got to that point. My dad was a guy who would... He wasn't much of a storyteller. He was very, pra- he was a very practical guy. Mm-hmm. So it's like same thing as like you talking about like your grandpa. Like don't tell like you. Don't, I don't need to learn about my shit. Like figure your own shit out. Yeah. You know, like you can learn my shit when you get your shit figured out. Yeah. Until then, like get your shit figured out. So, yeah, my dad was more of that kind of style thing. But like he'll he'll use like references. He was like you know. When I was your age, you know, that was something that was like that happened to me similarly, and like he would go into detail of it, like yeah. slight, so little detail, not not a lot, but a little bit. I think I feel like as a dad, you really can't like, you really can't go into a lot of detail. I mean, like, what? Okay, so for instance, if I was a father, you know, I couldn't tell my son that I was like a partier. Or, like, yeah, but see, like, or, like well, you know, be, with you, like, I think it's fine. But with me, there's no way other people aren't going to tell those stories. So it might as well, well just come goes, from me. Right? It's like something you get to hear from the word of mouth, right? Or like your uncle or like their, like your dad's brother or something's got to like be like, yo, this dude. <laughs> it's because of one of those things where you have to have people brag for you. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You can't brag yourself. Sure. You have to have someone else. It's like showing that humbleness. Yeah. And you're like, it's the back of your mind. You don't even know this shit, my boy. So, like, let my uncle tell, let, let my best friend tell you, like, all the shit that I had to go through, because yeah. I won't, because, you know, it's just, like, a humble thing, you know what I mean? Like, I think, uh, unless I'm, like, mistaken, you have, like, a unique experience, because your dad also coached you, right, for baseball? Oh, yeah. So, how was that, like, because a lot of parents, they just, like, you know, they're busy with work, so they just drop their kid off, maybe show up to a game. And they might not even understand the game, right? So they can't really be, like, telling you what you're doing wrong. They might be like, you need to score more, but they can't, like, oh, man. you know. So my dad was very – I'll just put it this way because, like, it wasn't just baseball. My dad was very involved in my life in a good way. Yeah, like, I mean, that's a always good. Yeah. Way. Like, he owned his own business at the time, so, like – He was busy. He wasn't busy in this – like, it was weird. He was a residential contractor and construction worker and owned his own construction company. So, like, we would hang out with – kids that were our age because you know i mean the the, pe- the parent like he would he would work on and do foundational work on houses for families with kids our age like you know he was just words of friends or like friends from like baseball so we got could meet a lot of kids that way we get to hang out with our dad a lot and like you know he hung out with us a lot because like he worked his schedule around our schedule mm-hmm. And then we would hang out with him on the job site because, you know, it's construction. Like, it was at someone's house, so we got to hang out. And in a sense, it was like, it was a daycare, but like, <laughs> it was daycare because it was you know, like our babysitting. dad was there. Yeah. But he also gave us the freedom to, like, be kids, have fun, and do the fruit, like, do the things kids that we stuff, wanted yeah. to. Like, I mean, when I, you know, as a kid, I was fascinated with, like, rifles because we had, like, we had like little pellet rifles, like you know, that shot like those metal BBs. So, mm-hmm. I think that's gonna cause real damage at Coke cans. Literally, yeah. Coke cans. It's like as much as we did. You know, we'd take it out. Or, like we'd go camping a lot, and that's what we'd shoot at. We wouldn't shoot animals or anything like that. Just like Coke targets. Cans. Yeah, literally, practicing. Yeah. yeah, practicing your eye. Yeah. So like I always had like that fun of fascination with being like a uh, me and my brother would play cops and robbers. <laughs> so like any like any like extra two by four, like I would get him or like his one of his workers to like carve up a gun for me you know, like a rifle just to pretend you know you, as a kid you'd always have pretend play yeah shit, you know so that was what i do yeah, it was a lot of fun but like taking it to sports so he was my baseball coach for a long time he was like he was a huge baseball guy mm-hmm. loved the sport loved coaching he was always like a, a huge coach but i mean he he made me and my brother like amazing baseball players like were we like the highest caliber? I wouldn't say. Me and my brother might have been mm-hmm. like when, like growing up. Me, I wouldn't say as much, but I, I was, I was solid. I was a very solid player. Yeah, I was very consistent. Especially like once I started getting like my grounds and my head like on my shoulders straight. You started understanding the game better. Yeah, once exactly once my like baseball IQ like, kind of kicked in, I was like, okay, like now I'm starting to become like a a, a, good, a better player. But again, there was a lot of players better than me in like a lot of leagues. 
But I kind of, it's like I kind of knew my role. You yeah. Know? I, mean, I kind of knew. I was like, oh, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not that good at. This guy's definitely more exceptional than me at this. But, you know, I'm better than him at that. You know, I could lay down bunts and I was faster. Or whatever the case may be. But, like, he knew that part really well. He was also my soccer coach. Like, he was just, he was just that guy that just wanted to be involved. That's good, though, because a lot of people kind of oh, oh, yeah. don't. <laughs> and he kept, and that was the thing, is, like, he knew... Uh, and this is maybe the spice, but I think personally, and I I would say, because he only coached us at a young age. Mm-hmm. You know, once it got to like that extreme competitive competitiveness, he knew. Again, it. baseball is a different story because that was his shit. Yeah, yeah. Like he was the baseball guy. But outside of baseball, because I got into soccer and that became my sport, he kind of was just like, I have to let the leash go on this one. Like, it is getting to the point where it's out of my caliber of like coaching. So I'm gonna leave it to the Someone coach. Else. Yeah. And he was really good at that. Like as a as a parent and a coach, I think he knew perfectly. Like when to transition. Yeah, I mean, you you have and I, again. I used to be his little wingman as a as a little coach when my brother was because he mainly coached my brother in baseball. That was yeah. Because that's your brother's shit. My yeah. brother was this baseball stud, and I was the soccer stud. That's just how it went. Now we were both good at you know, each other's sports, respective yeah. sports, but like if 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 it was a pickup game, like. If you picked him over me in baseball, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, if it was soccer, because of the age difference, I think there would be some discrepancy. But I think I would pick myself. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's just how it goes. Like soccer was my stick, baseball was his. Um, but yeah, I was always like, I I saw him have to deal with like those parents that would be like, like why is my kid not getting playing time? Yeah, right, or like exactly. Blah, 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 blah. Or the coach, the the outfield coach. The parent coach. So like, uh, there's that that that. Parent, they don't agree on like how to coach. The parent who would see their player either in the outfield or like on first base or like second, where, like wherever they're at, they would hover over them and be like, "This is how you, this is how you should be playing baseball." You know what I mean? You're doing it wrong, and this is how you do it right. Even though I'm not the coach, right? So yeah. like, my dad had to deal with that of like having to argue with a parent as a coach on like, no, your son needs to listen to the coach, not to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. So like he knew how to deal with that. He's been on both. He's been on one side of it, so he knew how to act accordingly on the other side. Now, him and I used to run into it every now and then, and I guarantee you, he would say otherwise. But like, we would have like, I used to be a little hot head. Weirdly enough, I used to be a little hot head during Same. soccer. <laughs> like, cause like, I did have an ego. I will admit, I had an ego to a certain degree. Cause like, I played for like multiple teams at a time. So I played for like a very, very highly competitive team, and I was again like I knew my role. I wasn't the best, but yeah. I wasn't, but I was like you had I a was place the on pack. the team. Yeah, I was in the middle of the pack right now, and you know it's somewhere. But at the same time, like my work ethic would always be the thing that kind of like pushed me to go harder. You know, I was just like I was a workhorse. But when I I also helped out like lesser teams that my my competitive coach had. And before he took those over, right, we had other coaches that would take over, and I, I would run into so many problems with those coaches. Just because, like, I get an ego. I'm like, oh. Yeah, and you're so used to your dad coaching. Yeah. It wasn't even my dad. It was like, well, it was my professional soccer coach at that time. Like, I've had him as my coach. So my dad coached me soccer when I was, like, eight. Mm-hmm. Right? And, like, funnily enough, we had this other coach who was a, uh, he was a, um, I want to say Army drill sergeant. Oh, fuck. And so his son was on, like, I played with his son, and he treated us no worse than he would treat us, like, his cadets. So, like, as he would make up, dude, we were eight years old doing fucking push-ups, <laughs> running, like, miles, dude. Like, we were the fittest soccer team in our little rec, rec league division. Yeah. Like, we won every year. And then it got to the point, like I said, where, like, the competition just, like, kept getting... Oh, uh, there was more competition and people yeah. were getting stronger and like it wasn't all about fitness anymore. So that's when we left. And once that happened, my dad took a step back because again, that was out of his wheelhouse. So he kind of like let the reins go. But again, he didn't become like that hovering parent at the same time. He was like, we need to get you better. So like off court or like off the soccer pitch, you know, outside of practice, him and I would like do a bunch of shit. But once, once I went to practice, like... That was out of his domain, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. But he used to be the he used to be the filming guy. So <laughs> oh he used yeah. To film a lot of our games for like you know for reasons of like records to keep or like 
or if like you during want to, high school we had it for you know to like review review film you know watch like oh dude let's watch this team how they play again so we can have a good idea of like you know which players to watch out for and which players are strong players and how their play style is so like that became a huge thing but like on the in that middle range of like high school transition like him and i used to butt heads on things because he Again, like he would see me play with somewhat of an ego. He'd be like, what the fuck? Mm-mm. And I'd be like, what do you mean? With like him and I would talk back at each other. Like mid game, dude. Like people would literally be kicking the ball past me. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, it was bad. I did that with my coach too, a little bit. Like with, my, with some of my coaches because it was one of those things where I was like, what was it? I knew my role and I knew my position as a player. But you just thought you could do more. But yeah, exactly. I was like, the way they were utilizing yeah. me was not to my best ability, and I was like, yeah, or like they just don't see like the work you're putting in on like the back end, so they don't know you're fully capable of or whatever. Yeah, it was one of those things. So I have a bar, like me and my me and a couple bartenders talk about it in this way. It's like, you know, like I want the bartenders to also work in this mindset, but I I gotta remember that they don't they don't have the same mindset as me. So that was like that was like a realization I had to have like in my middle range soccer teams as I was like I have this very soccer highly highly competitive you know team mindset where we're there to fucking win and now I have to dial it down to this team that's not quite there yet they want to be there but they're not quite there so I'm at like a 25 and they're at like a 10 you know what I mean like my fucking like tenacity and like yeah. amplitude but yeah like he he was he's We've we've had our run ins, that's for sure, but like at the same time, like he's done a lot of things, like a lot a lot of things right in my opinion for for me as a person. Yeah. I yeah. Know. I feel like because what I've seen, at least at that time, because my dad at least played like some sports because in India like cricket's big, so he used to do that. Yeah. And like I'm not good at baseball. We both know this. So like I'm not touching anything with a bat and a ball. Like but like my dad still had like that passion for sports. So he was into cricket and tennis. I wasn't good at tennis, so Drop that pretty early <laughs> but uh yeah when i like played basketball he'd record games he wouldn't yell during the game he's not one of those like parents to kind of get into either, it we were very discreet about our <laughs> yeah he would no no but the car rides back would be like nah you oh, fucked up God, like dude. why did you not do this are you being too passive the car, yeah, like, the car rides back were the worst because yeah. you're like if you had a bad game or if you had like not the best game you knew you were gonna hear about it First thing you yeah. get into that first thing that door closes, you you kind of like wait it. Like I feel like that's sometimes worse because the parents who are loud during the game they get all their shit out and it's like they're done. But yeah, like, like my dad was really smart about it because he knew. Like I was always, hey, my dad knew. My dad, I was I was such an easy book to read. So he and they knew, knew the I was, right like, buttons. Had a chip on my shoulder, yeah. or I was ready for like an argument. Or they knew so what he, buttons to push to. But he would bait me. Yeah. He would bait me so hard. He'd be like, he'd either keep it really silent until I'm ready to explode because I'm like, I'm waiting. Frustrated. For this. Yeah. I'm waiting for this argument to come. Or it was one of those things where he would just say something so slick that I couldn't really like explode on him about it, but like it would get me. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was just like, just enough. It was like the straw that broke the camel's back, and I would just like, Flare up a bit, and he'd be like, "Why so? Like, where's all this aggression coming from?" Like, yeah, I'm like, "Why are you mad?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh. yeah. I definitely like in that sense. I'm grateful because I see like some of my cousins today, and like they play sports like at like whatever level they're at, and their parents kind of just like drop them off, or they don't really like aren't as involved. So like, even though my dad didn't fully understand basketball and like the IQ of basketball. He would at least be like, you were wide open. You should be like shooting that. This is like some parents who just like don't say anything or they just think their kid's the best at everything. Like, yeah. So I'm grateful I always had that like criticism and like try to push me to be better. Yeah, I mean, it's always tricky because we always, I at least, I always hear about those stories about like dads who aren't involved in people's lives or whatever because you know, whatever situations happen. Yeah. So I'm definitely grateful that Thank I you. have like my dad involved. I don't know, my dad just like, he just happened to know, the, he just knew how to balance it correctly for some reason. Like, again, like I said, we didn't have the best run in every single time. And we actually had huge problems, like, later on in life for me. Yeah, yeah. But like, end of high of that, school like, type, yeah. For the most part, growing up, he just knew how to dial it in. And it's not even to think of, like, 
It was more of a just disagreement on perspectives of things. Like, I think yeah, dads are more prone to give you that tough love or that like reality gut check that you yeah. sometimes don't want to hear, but you yeah. gotta hear. So like sometimes they get portrayed, or you just feel like they're the villain, right? Yeah, it was but, one of those things where it was like, did I agree with his perspective at the time? It, probably not, and even yeah. now it's like I'd have to reassess it. Yeah, but did it come from like a good place? Probably. Yeah, and I couldn't tell though. You know, yeah. I mean? one of those things where even to this day, I was like, I don't know where it was coming from. Like, was it to like help me, or was it? Was well, yeah. It because I was like, was it just because like that was like the kind of like ultimatum he got, but like, just even a little better than that? Like, I don't yeah. Know. Sometimes it's like some parents want to live through their kids, so they kind of force them to do things that they w- or like they wish they could do or they wanted to do. Or like it's like one of those things, like the same way we see Kendall as a potential. Like, was it a potential he saw in me that he yeah. I can achieve that I myself have like not seen it? Yeah, because they see yeah. a lot, dude. Like. Like I, like I said, he found he found the right like balance for me, especially yeah, I, not even just sports wise, but like sports in school. He just like he was concise and he just knew what to say and when it needed to be said. Like nothing more, nothing less. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he wasn't like he straight to the point, basically. He wasn't coddle. He didn't coddle me too much, but at the same time, yeah. Now there are some points again where I would do things different in terms of like. How I live, but at the same time, it just fit my lifestyle, like yeah. almost like a glove. You know what I mean? It was just like a perfect fit. Like uh, for me, I was like, oh, like I want to socialize more, but at the same time, I wasn't a huge person socializing yeah. outside of like sports, like sports at school, and I had my priorities straight. And like, may I, you know what I mean? It was one of those things where he kind of knew that like our school was that party, like school. Yeah, yeah. so and he just didn't want you in the wrong crowd. Didn't want me hanging out with the wrong crowd. And that was yeah. the thing is like, like I said, it fit me perfectly because I didn't want to hang out with the crowd either. So yeah. it kind of gave me that like, a yeah, good excuse to like rely on to. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that was his intention. I guarantee you, it wasn't. But it was just one of those things. But like, for so for soccer, like like I said, like we would have our arguments and we would have our but at the same time, yeah. like, there was like, there was like moments where like kind of saw my like progress kind of like click each time it was like a like a light bulb went off yeah it was like one of those things where i'm like 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 exponential growth and just kept expo- like the exponent it just kept going to like a new new exponent we yeah. like i was like i was very i was always very competitive and always athletic but i didn't start hitting my like sh- first stride until i started joining a competitive team and the team was just above, like, leagues above me at the time. But I wanted to work hard, you know? So, like, that was, like, the first click was him. But, again, like I said, there was, like, a lot of things that we did that, like, I didn't agree to. Like, I would be drinking Red Bulls at, like, nine years old just <laughs> trying to get through. You know, I, I, I had bad sleeping habits even then. Yeah. Well, like, nine-year-old, like, drinking Red Bull to the yeah. first 7 a.m. game. Like, you know. Him and I both had the same intention, though. It was like we both wanted me to keep succeeding. Like we could see me. I could. I wanted to keep getting better, and he wanted to see me keep getting better. So like we did what we could to to like maintain my like position on a very competitive team. Yeah. And I was like kind of the first click was like di- dialing in that. So like because of that, because of his push there, like I would literally go on like five mile runs as, as a ten year old with my uncle just to like compensate for like my lack of fitness that i was missing or like for like you know like the skills i was missing like we would literally do cone drills or whatever it took yeah and once i like dialed that in you know like then it became like okay you know i joined up like my soccer career was a very like roller coaster it was like you know very rec team but we were the best in the rec <laughs> league and yeah. then it was like i was on the best team in the like most competitive division but i wasn't like the worst player on that team and then it was like okay like that team disbanded and broke apart and like there was like dramas that happened so like my head coach the coach that i've been playing for for like years on end like he went on to play with the like, coach in a different uh soccer like, league okay so i left to go play with a league similar and the competition level was somewhere between like my rec league at the very beginning and like that super the good team yeah and i was again i was like i was one of the better players in that league and everyone, like, it was one of those things, because, like, I just had fun. That was it. Like, 
I wanted to get better, and I always wanted to play better, but it was just so much fun. Yeah. So everyone always enjoyed, I always got compliments about people watching me play, because I was just, just played my heart out. Yeah, you know, just, one of the energizer, was just like, yeah. It wasn't like for anything, like any alternative motive except for having fun, or trying to win the game and playing. Just being like the best you, yeah. And then again, when then we went from yeah, it was that, and then high school started. And like same high school was always weird because like, my freshman team, I was like viewed as not one of the better players, but I think I kind of like people kind of started to see the potential of me being like a really great player. Mm-hmm. So like I would have like, amazing games, and then some games I would just be like not the best, but like just like in basketball, my defense is always rock solid. Yeah, <laughs> like, always rock solid. I mean, you play goalie, so yeah, right? yeah. Well, even as a different, so I was an outside back before. Yeah, uh, okay. I was like a solid outside back. I just fucking was a rock solid back. That's just how it went. Like I was just super fast, and I just knew I was just like my soccer IQ just like at that level, my soccer IQ kind of took off a bit, mm-hmm. and I kind of couldn't. Like, Especially in like the in our West Cal division, I was like I was just really good at being able to play against those types of players. Um, and then from then on, I played with like my current and my my coach that I've had for like multiple years, the one on my highest competitive. I joined his team, and the skill gap from my like from high school and that, and even the team I played for prior was just so big again. Yeah, it was like overwhelming, but at the same time, like me and my dad both knew kind of those things. I was like, he knew I wanted it, and he knew he was going to help me get there. And he didn't know like how to, because again, that caliber was beyond both his. Of us yeah, time. but he knew to just keep pushing. So we just did that. Like literally, he was just that guy. It was just like, I will be. He pushed the right buttons. At yeah, the right he was times. like, I don't know how to do this for you. I don't know, but like, we'll do it. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, we'll. We'll take literally what we did in practices with this team, and we will literally just do drill them until you, they fucking are cake work. And then from then on, like, became one of those things where I just hung out with my coach a lot because he coached like three or four different teams. So I would have four or five different practices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like all busy the, schedules, all yeah. the hard shit in my life, like waking up early and getting to school, was always taken care of by someone else. Because, like, everyone knew, like, my whole fucking drive was soccer. Yeah. Like, it was literally, like, it would be school. Soccer. <laughs> yeah, it would be literally, like, I would do school. In the, I'd, be, I'd, I'd practice soccer in the morning before school, so I'd get up at, like, 5 a.m. Or my brother would wake my ass up. I'd bring my soccer ball, like, my gear, and I'd yeah. practice in the morning. And then, then it would be school. And then at lunch, I'd practice sometimes, too, if I had extra time at lunch. And then after that, if I wasn't in season for high school, I'd be practicing as like three Sorry. or four practices with yeah. my coach. And again, my high school coach was my club coach. So like after high school, there were certain rules you like had to maintain to like qualify for like high school. So like you could practice outside of high school, but you couldn't do more than like half the amount of players on a field. So like you have 11 players on a field. If you did six V six, then you can disqualify your whole entire high school record and team for that. shit. Yeah, if they caught you. So we would be, so again, my coach was my high school coach, so he had like, he was like, we are not running that risk. So we would play fives or fours on short fields. And like literally, I would just get my reps in and I would just get my practices in. I would do literally like high school practice and then like four, three or four practices after that. And then I'd come home. And somehow still have time for like schoolwork and everything like mm-hmm. that. But yeah, the whole time I, this is, and this is where my dad like kind of was like the linchpin for me in soccer. Cause like it got to the point, cause like this is, I like hit my peak. I literally hit like, I was like hitting like my highest strides before I tore my ACL. And then I tore my ACL. And it was one of the things where like my, like my drive wasn't gone yet and I was still like determined and I was like I can make this happen and then I got injured again yeah and that was when I was just like damn that was literally like everything out of me was taken I was like like no. your heart sunk you're just like fuck yeah it was one of those things where I was like this is what's like I put in so much too much time into bro. this and it's it's gone like that I think it's funny because like me and you out of probably all, most of our friends have like the most similar schedules mm-hmm. growing up because like for me it'd be like wake up early because my dad was like I'm gonna drop you off at school but my work starts before your school starts you're getting to school early no matter what yeah. the fuck happened 
So I used to be there at like 6 59 or like seven and i lived right across the fucking street so i was like the first one there but i lived the closest yeah and like i would go to school and then like maybe daycare because my parents wouldn't get off work in time and then i would just go to like karate and just be there and like just it would be karate and the basketball and that was it yeah i was always jam tech, jamming my days so then my senior year though this is like when things really kind of like it was like when everything clicked because i tore my ac out like everyone again like to this point Regardless of how good or bad I was, people just liked the fact that like I would try put hard everything yeah. into each game. Like, I had I left everything on the field. That was it. Like I could be the you could be doing horrible, but like yeah, yeah. And that was the hard part because my coach was such a critical coach, and that would always get on my like I'd get on my nerves. But that always like wavered me because like I would make like twenty great plays and one bad play, and he just focused on the bad. Yeah, and I'd get yelled at, and I'd be like, ah, dude. And then it would snowball. If yeah, because it gets it, in your head. If I heard it, or if it was one of those things where I made a mistake, and he was like, what the fuck? Like, come on. Yeah. Like, it would snowball, and I'd make another mistake, and he'd be like, what the? But he wouldn't take me out, because, like, in soccer, subs were, were rare, for mm-hmm. the most part. But, like, if he saw, like, a lot going on, like, he will make that call. But for me, it was one of, it literally was one of those things where you're just like, okay, like, come on, like, I can't make that. And I, like, would get in my head too much. And so, like, it was one of the things, like, this was, I, I kind of figured it out, po- like, before my, I tore my ACL. Yeah. yeah, I tore my ACL. And then you had to refigure it out. Well, I quit. Oh. I quit after, after I and then he was twice. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, senior year, like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And my dad was, like, all for it. Like, he, I don't think he was happy with that decision. But, but he knew he, where it was. He too. respected it. You know, he was like, I can't force you to do something you don't want to do as much as, like, yeah, and it's like, your body I, that's taking the toll, right? So, well, he was like, he loved watching me play too. He's like, I, I want to see you continue taking this on to new heights. Like, I don't give a fuck if it's a community college. Like, keep going, keep taking it. So I was like, okay. But I tore my ACL twice, or I tore my ACL, re-injured it, and he was like, okay, like I get it. Like your mental psyche is not there for it anymore. Like I'm not gonna push. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse about it. You know what I mean? Like it's already dead. Yeah. So. But my coach kind of pulled me out of like retirement, out of like my like. I took. You're like, sulking. I took like literally like six. I took six months off from the ACL, and then I played my first practice. I got injured again, so I had to take another four months off. And then on top of that, I took like another five months off. So I took like about a year, almost a yeah. I give give or take a year. A year, a year few and three months. months. And then he was like towards the end of summer. I think it was about a year. I think it was a year I was gone. I don't think it was a year. This was a year because it was summer of my, like, the se- like summer going into senior year. My coach was like, hey, we're going to need you for high school. And I was like, I haven't touched the soccer ball in, like, nine, ten months, eleven months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you need me? It's like, yeah, we're going to need you. And I was like, okay. So I, like, kind of, like, got, got, got back myself into back into, like, it wasn't my best shape, right? Like, I was fucking... I hit. I mean, yeah, and it's hard. I come off injury, too. I hit my soccer peak. Yeah, a whole year off was fucking garbage. But I hit my soccer peak. Yeah, it was right, right before my ACL tour. That was, like, when I was, like... I was, like, if I keep this up and I keep going at this rate, like, nothing's going to stop me. Like, I had, I had college... Like, I had college scouts looking at me for, like, a little bit. But coming back into my senior year, I was, like... It was literally like a fucking movie, you know what I mean? Like the guy who's like getting pulled out of retirement and <laughs> hasn't practiced in forever, but like we'll we'll put whatever he can on the line to fucking make it work for the team. And so like I did, I had a little bit of an ego there too, because like you know the way my coach approached me it was one of those things where he was like, he needs me to play, you know, I'm not guaranteed a starting spot, but I should be getting a starting spot or mm-hmm. like, becoming the captain. Like that's the that was like the expectation, like with how much I've invested in like the again the way it was approached and that was not the the expectation was not the reality yeah and it was one of those things where he was like no like yeah i needed you but at the same time if there are players who are just outperforming you or like i see who, who look better i mean again i've had runners with my own coach too um, you're like why did you make me do this Super yeah 100 percent. i was fun. like if you really needed me this much like why am i sitting back so like, yeah. i'm putting in it I mean, it wasn't like I was putting in half ass effort. Like, yeah, I'm like, like you're like, and you worked hella hard to get even to that point yeah. to even be on the. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I know I'm not like, I was like, I'm not far off, 
from like the rest of the players at the same time. Like, it's like why are we? Why are we doing this? Yeah, we why are you pull me out of retirement and try to bring me back if you're not even going to play? You know, it was it was one of those things too. Where it was like it wasn't just the fact that I wasn't playing or that I wasn't starting. I didn't even get play time for like the first couple of games. Yeah. So like I was just like, or we had a scrimmage game and he put me in for like five minutes and I did a really I did really well for those five minutes and I like. I, but I was really frustrated because of like everything that happened. Yeah. And and that same day I like talked to my or that same night I talked to my coach and I was just like, This is some bull. I was like, I usually never talk back to, yeah. to that coach. He was like the guy who like taught me everything. But I was like, yo, this is some bullshit. So he and I got into it. And then at the end of that game, my, my dad and I was like telling this to my dad. I was like, yo, I fuck fuck this shit. But I was like, I can't quit. Yeah. I'm not a quitter on this shit. I've already invested. So I was like, I'm not playing for my fucking coach. Fuck him. <laughs> I didn't say it like that, but I was just like, that was like the overall atmosphere. I was like, fuck this guy. Like, I hate this bullshit, dude. Like, like, fuck this. I'm playing for myself. I said that in it, like, all clicked. Click. My dad was just like, there you go. It happened. And that moment forward, dude, I had the greatest. Rest of the season. <laughs> great, yeah, the greatest season, like, anybody can have on that team. And I got, like, a little, like, a high school award for it, like, within the realm of soccer there. And at the end. And, like, even post that, I, like, played a few games, like, with my old club teams. Even then, like, everyone was like, like, you're still, like, one, of the, one yeah. of the players we love to watch play. Like, are you going to college to play? And, you know, it was one of those things where they were really sad to hear that I, like, wasn't at the time. Yeah. And then I got that college, then I got that De Anza, the De Anza scholarship. So I was, like, <laughs> I kind of lied to everybody, but it was one of those things where I had no idea it was coming. yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, that was like literally that was like everything in that whole like series from like high, high from school. birth to yeah. yeah to the end of high school was like everything clicked and like my dad was like on point as a as a father as a coach as a he as just a was whoever sports you needed. supporter yeah. as a filmographer or like whatever the role he played he did it like or like whatever role you needed he did it yeah he did it really well. Now again, that's that's like within my life. Now everything outside of that bubble, I can't say. Was that? I can't. Clean? I can't yeah. speak on because, like, I don't know. Like, it's a bigger dynamic than me, so I can't yeah, really yeah. speak on. But like, there's too many factors at play within my own life. From my own perspective, what he did for me was like was. I can't say perfect because I don't know perfection, but like yeah. it was the best that he could be. The best I was gonna get, and, yeah. and, and I mean that with like the like all sincerity. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was he did, like he did the best in his capability. It was a ten out of ten. Yeah. Just say it like that. It was a ten out of ten. Would recommend again. <laughs> but again, that just fitted me. That fitted me perfectly. Yeah, and that's why him and I still get along to this day, even after like whatever fallouts we had. Yeah. If we had any. Yeah, hopefully more people, like at least the younger generation, have those relationships with their parents and like their dads. Yeah. And just like have better communication to see where the other side's coming from. Cause I hope that's the generation that we become too. Like we become like, I mean, the whole idea of like par- parent, like parentage is being better than your parents, right? Yeah, it's and I feel like it's also just being like, the best for your kid too, right? Like put the all the bullshit aside, just be the best for your kid. But that's the way you learn, right? It's from the perspective of like, how did my parent raise me? How do yeah. I want to do better than that? You know what I mean? I want to do better than what my dad did for me. He wanted to do better than what his dad, which his dad did for him, right? Yeah. Same with my mom. She wants to do better than what her parents did for her. That's just how it goes, right? You gotta keep it going. Yeah. Like, how keep do I improving. make my? It's, it becomes a thing of like. How can I make my kids successful in their own words and in, yeah. their, in their own definition of success? Like, how can I achieve them what they want to achieve for themselves? Like, I'm not going to give it to them on a silver platter, but like, how can I help them? How can I be a good support in their life to the point where once I'm out of their life, they are fucking birds yeah. flying yeah. in the sky? You know, it's such a hard balance. It's such a hard balance because I've seen... I've seen it done where people coddle their, their children too much. I've and then there's the also times where you don't give your kids enough love. You're too hard. Yeah. And then you put them down like the men, their mental is all fucked up. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Parenting is definitely very tricky. But we've been lucky to have like our dads, both for like Father's Day, be like pretty solid for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too is like, at the, is like 
No, I didn't get to just learn from my own dad's perspective. Too. Yeah, I learned you, from my cousins, your from uncles, my uncle. I learned yeah. it from you know my friend's dad. I've learned it from how my friends were raised based yeah. on like them. I'm like, what did your parents do that made you guys so awesome? Right? Yeah. Like same thing. Yeah. It takes a village to raise kids, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> it takes a village to raise one. That's and right. like sometimes you don't always want to hear it from your parents. So you yeah. hearing it from like maybe your friends or your friend's parents or. Mom. Yeah, other people's parents, whatever, but, you know. Yeah. Or you just don't want to hear it at all. Yeah, there's sometimes you're just like, nah, fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm fucking right. It's like, I don't care if I'm wrong. I'm dying on this shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, well, with that, I guess it's a... Hope everyone has a good Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> with their dads. Love your dad, hopefully. Yeah. Um, just let them know that yeah, man. what Do they mean to nice. you. Say, and not just like Father's Day, just like just all in the time. General, man. Like especially if you see they're having a hard day or a tough time at work, you just you know. Spread the love. I know. Like we don't we don't give. We don't need fucking days for this shit. Like you could be doing it every day. <laughs> yeah, again, not just with your own father. Like yeah, like with your mom, with your friends, uncles, whatever. Pay it forward. Yeah. Pay it forward and pay it backwards, man. That's how it goes. Yeah, we only get a certain amount of time here, so. Yeah. On that note, thank you for tuning in. It's been your boy Maui. And it's Bambi. And this is Couch Surfing. Peace. Peace.